Whoever told you that physics experiments are difficult was lying. All you need for this is a microwave, a bar of chocolate, a plate and a ruler. You need to make sure you take out the turntable because the plate should stay still. Trust me on this one. Next, all you need to do is microwave it for around about 20 seconds, not until it's fondue, just until you have a few obvious spots where it's melted. Once done, you're going to want to take a ruler and measure the distance between two of those melted spots. And that's going to give us half of a wavelength. Inside a microwave, microwaves themselves reflect off the inner walls and form what's known as a stationary wave. This means that something called superposition is taking place. This is where the amplitudes of the two waves combine, leaving some areas of zero intensity called nodes and some areas of maximum intensity called antinodes. And the melted parts are where it's at maximum intensity, so if we measure the distance between two antinodes, that will give us half of our wavelength. Now in this case, we measured seven centimeters. So one full wavelength of our microwaves is 14 centimeters or 0.14 meters. Next for the calculation, the speed of any wave is given by its frequency multiplied by the wavelength. For microwaves, to find the frequency, you just need to check the label on the back of the microwave. Most of them run at this frequency, 2450 megahertz. That means 2.45 billion waves per second. That's the frequency. So we need to then multiply that by our wavelength to give us our speed. And that happens to be 343 million meters per second, which is actually very close to the actual speed of light of 300 million meters per second, which is not bad for something you can just find in your kitchen.